Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're talking about Kanban. Jira offers two styles when you're creating a Jira project, either Scrum or Kanban, and most of my videos usually focus on Scrum, but today I got a special treat for you. Today we're taking a deep dive and a deep look into how to use the Kanban project inside of Jira. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Now this video is part of the Summer of Atlassian 2.0, so please make sure you do hit that subscribe button right now, as our goal is to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of summer. Also, we are trying to double our views here, so if you wanna share this video, share it with your coworkers, with your team, with your peers, with everybody that you know, help us hit those goals as well. Every like and every comment will also help YouTube show this video to even more people. So you can help out by just smashing the like button or dropping a simple comment in the comment section below. Let's jump into today's video. All right, so today we're going to be creating a Kanban style project. Like I mentioned earlier, most of my examples, most of the projects that I use are very heavily focused on Scrum. And so today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different and helping you understand and get value out of how to use a Kanban style project. So if you're wondering, first of all, where is this Kanban Scrum thing? When you go to create a new project, and now keep in mind that you might not actually be able to do this. This might be a setting that your Jira administrator has to do for you. But when you go to create a brand new project, you are met with a decision. You have to pick whether you're doing Kanban or Scrum. Now for the purpose of this video, we're gonna pick Kanban. And I actually also wanna take a moment here to point out a critical flaw. This workflow at last if you're listening is incorrect. This is not the workflow that you get. Now we are gonna be talking about the workflow in a second, but I just wanna call out that this is fake news here. This is not the right Temp, uh, workflow that you're actually gonna get when you create a Kanban style project. So we're gonna click on use template, click on select company manage because that's what we always do, and then you give it a name. Okay, and here we are inside of a brand new Kanban style project. Now, how do I know that it's a Kanban? Two things are gonna give it away. First, it says Kanban on the left-hand side. And second, you'll notice that there is no backlog. There is no backlog between roadmap or Kanban board. So those are the two biggest key indicators to tell you that you're in a Kanban style project because when you're in a Scrum one, you'll notice that it says backlog and it says active sprint. And in this case, you're not gonna get either of those. Next, the other thing that looks different is that your backlog, rather than being in a dedicated section over here, is actually on your board itself. And what this basically means is that whenever you go to create an issue, unlike the Scrum project where it goes into the backlog and it's kind of hidden, and nothing shows up on your board until you hit that start sprint button. But unlike all of that, the moment you create an issue, it shows up on your board. Now this can be good or it could be bad. Additionally, one extra little detail I wanna give you is that unlike your Scrum project where it only really shows your stories, your tasks, and your bugs, this board is going to show you everything. It's gonna show you your epics, it's gonna show you whatever issue types you throw at it, and so everything's gonna kind of be in this project and in this board, and it could be very overwhelming. So the reason teams go to Kanban, at least the reason why I encourage teams to use Kanban is because their maturity and following the way of Scrum is just not quite there. But teams still wanna come in and use Jira. So Kanban is a great way to come into Jira, follow some rules, but not necessarily have to buy into all of these Scrum methodologies and all the rules that come associated with Scrum. But as you can see, there starts to be some significant drawbacks. There starts to be some limitations because the experience of a Kanban board, while still useful, is not going to be as ideal or as efficient as that of Scrum. So let me show you what happens when you create an issue. So I'm gonna create basically a story here. And when I click Create, you're gonna notice that that story is just immediately in that backlog. And when I'm ready to start basically working on it, we're gonna take an item from this backlog here and we're gonna move it to Selected for Development, move it to In Progress, and move it to Done. This is basically bare bones. This is just how Jira works, specifically with respect to Kanban. But 
I'm going to show you some cool things. I'm going to show you something very, very interesting here that Kanban style boards allow you to modify in order to, I'm going to use the word elevate your experience with Kanban. So check this out. So typically, like I mentioned earlier, the moment you hit a create issue, everything's going to show up on your backlog. The bad thing about that is that if you have a thousand, two thousand, right, issues, they're all going to be in your backlog and you're going to be scrolling for a very, very long time. And in fact, Jerry's going to yell at you a little bit about that as well, because there is a limit as to how many issues can show up in that backlog. So it's very cluttered. It becomes a very cluttered environment for your team and for your developers. So you don't necessarily want to have your backlog here unless you're really only working on like 20, 50 tops stories at a time. So my recommendation is to basically do this. Come into your board settings here. Go to board settings. Grab your backlog status, this white rectangle here. Grab it and drag it over to the left where it says Kanban backlog. And what this is going to do if you click back to board here in the top right, you'll notice that I now have a backlog over here. And that issue that I created earlier has disappeared. But where did it go? Well, it went to the backlog over here. And as you can see, my story that I created is over here. Now, this is where I want to take a moment here to pause and explain a fundamental difference between Scrum and Kanban style projects. Because fundamentally, this is really, 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 really different. When you are planning a sprint, you're going to take an item from the backlog and you move it into your sprint. This is, everybody knows how to do this if you use Jira. This is just a, a fundamental bread, bread and butter of Jira. Okay. But what you may not have noticed is that the movement from the backlog, from that bottom section to that sprint, is a field change. A field in Jira, the sprint field, is being populated with the name of your sprint, and that's it. But take a look at how Kanban does this. I'm going to take my story and I want you to pay special attention to the status. Now, sometimes it doesn't load, so you have to refresh. Sometimes your chair is just a little wonky like that. But take a look at the status. Notice that the status is that of backlog. Now, watch this. When I, and the reason I want to do this is because my issue doesn't show up, right? So, in order to get it to show up on your board, you want to select it for development. So, watch what happens when I move it up here. So when I move it to select it for development, notice that I have transitioned. This is very, very important for you to understand and digest this because you have just transitioned the issue. So first, not only is that last thing, that documentation there on that first page completely incorrect because there is no to do, right? It's selected for development and backlog and statuses. But second, unlike your scrum where you're just adding or modifying a field value, you've actually now transitioned. So this is very key for you to understand. And the reason that this is key is because while Jira does allow you to have both a Kanban and a Scrum board in the same project, fundamentally they work so different that depending on which template you pick first, your project's gonna be optimized for that style of project. So even if you bring in both, one of them is gonna suffer, one of them's gonna lack because what you're gonna see is if you do have just a to-do in progress and done, your backlog becomes your to-do and moving it to in progress is immediately putting into in progress because you don't have a selective for development status in a Scrum style project. So I want you to be very careful here and make the right decision. And if you're gonna do a decision, I would say pick Kanban first and then add Scrum, because that workflow is going to give you all the statuses you need for Kanban to work well. And you're just going to have extra statuses in Scrum, which is okay. But if you go the other way, if you go Scrum first, you're only going to have those three statuses. And so if you try to do Kanban, now you're going to have not enough statuses. So Scrum's going to work fine, but Kanban's just going to suffer really badly. So that would be my recommendation there. Now, aside from that, you'll notice that another major big difference is that we don't have the little bubble over here. And what that means is we really can't estimate. So since story pointing is not a thing in Kanban, what is? Well, I'm glad you asked because Kanban is designed for something called a work in progress or a whip limit. And the whip limits, basically, you're not trying to measure complexity and level of effort of a task, but rather you're just trying to push things through your pipeline. And you want to push those as quickly as possible with the minimal amount of interference. So the way Atlassian lets you do this is if you go back to your Kanban board, you're going to want to go to board settings again, 
And this time we're going to want to come over to, to columns. And over here in your columns, you're going to notice that you have no min, no max. And essentially what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to define a number here. So you're going to want to take the total number of tasks. Let's say that each team member can work on two tasks. You have five team members. So you'll give a 10 here. And so at any given point, your team is allowed to work on 10 different items. And when you do that, Jira is going to now know your max. And so as you create more and more stories, watch what happens. So I'll just do story two. All right, so assuming I know how to count, watch what happens when I start basically adding all these stories into my selective for development. All right, so what I'm basically doing is I'm gonna bring in at least nine stories in here, and you can see that I have nine, and I'm gonna bring in my 10th. And when I bring in my 10th, I'm gonna go to my Kanban board, because I want you to see what this looks like, right? Nothing really is happening here. Just Jira's telling you, hey, you're allowed to have a max of 10, everything's still great because we still only have 10 stories. But watch what happens when I bring in my 11th story. When I bring this in, this max goes red, and now my entire column is red. And this is Jira's way of basically telling you, hey, you've exceeded your whip. You've exceeded your work in progress limit, and this is not good because from a Kanban perspective, the less is better. You don't want your teams multitasking. You don't want them being just distracted with doing busy work, you want them focused on one task at a time so they can push that thing through all the way through. Think of a manufacturing line. So that's essentially how you set up those whips in Jira for a Kanban board. Now, unlike Scrum, right? So essentially when we get to Scrum, when we finish our sprint, you'll notice that you're prompted with two options. You can either A, move any unfinished stories to the next sprint, or B, you can move those unfinished stories to the top of your backlog, but in Kanban, we don't have that luxury. There is never a start or a stop in Kanban. Instead, you just keep pushing and pulling. But what this essentially means though, is after some time, your done status, your done column is going to get a little bit full. And so you have two ways of fixing this problem. So if you go back to Jira, the easiest and the way that's basically the least headache for you is under general, all the way at the bottom, You'll notice that this says hide completed issues older than, and you get to pick one, two, four, or keep them all. Now I recommend you keep at least one if you're trying this out. One week would be good, or two weeks is gonna be kind of in line with sprints. And at this point, folks, you're basically in a sprint, <laughs> okay? But make sure you set that up. And what this is essentially gonna do is anytime that all these issues make it all the way to the right, when they make it all the way to done, after two weeks time, those issues are gonna be slowly flushed away. Now that's option one. Option two, and this is a this requires a little bit more planning, but not really, just it depends, right? Is you actually have this button up here that says release. And you might wanna be methodical on this. You might not just wanna randomly click this release button. And so somebody like your scrum master or Kanban master in this case, you're gonna to wanna to put some method to the madness here and create releases that are thoughtful and that are acknowledging what work is being done. But in any rate, you just click on this release button, you can create a new version if your project doesn't have a version or just select the version that is available for you. And so once you pick your version name, I'm just gonna call it my first release, click on that release button, put a date, whatever you wanna do there. And when you do this, once the re release is created, you'll notice that those issues will disappear. And so anytime that you want to do this, you essentially want to make sure that whatever was supposed to be done is done. I would meet with your team, talk about it, and then go, okay, are we good to release this and release it? Which basically means you're just flushing them out. You're not formally shipping software, deploying anything. It is just a, basically a, a Jira term to essentially move those issues off of your board so that you can continue to work on all the issues that you're responsible for. So that's it. Just to recap, you don't get sprints, you don't get story points, you don't really get a backlog out of the box. You can make some modifications, and as you can see, there's some, there's a difference. There's just a fundamental difference with how Kanban versus Scrum works. But I do urge you to at least try it out, and if you are a Kanban user, if you're relying on this, let me know in the comment section if you think I missed anything, or if you have any questions about something that maybe now you have like an aha moment where you're like, oh, that's why this stuff doesn't work the way it works on Scrum, right? So let me know if you, anything comes to mind in the comment section. But I hope this video helped you out. I hope 
that this video helped clarify just some of the fundamentals. I haven't seen a whole lot of videos on the fundamentals of how Kanban and Jira works, and I'm hoping that this video puts you in the right track and gets you going in the right direction. But anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you made it this far and you haven't subscribed yet, again, remember we're trying to hit those 10,000 subscribers. So make sure you smash the subscribe button. That's just completely free for you to smash. Also drop a like, add a comment, add a question, a concern, whatever it may be, help interact with the channel, help interact with the video so that YouTube, you know, does all of their thing with their algorithm. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need